Hi, this is Robin, and in today's video, I'm going to be focusing on using the Quick Mask tool to refine selections in Photoshop. I had previously created a video workshop on making selections in Photoshop using Photoshop's automated selection tools. So this three-part series I'm doing uh, follows up on that in terms of how to refine those automated selections. Part one in this refining series I did on using the quick selection tool. This part two is focusing on using the quick mask tool. And part three will be focused on using the select and mask tools and interface for much finer types of details like hair, fur, things of that nature, more delicate selections. The quick mask tool that I'm covering in this video is really great for some detail, but not really intricate detail. So what the quick mask tool does is it turns the area inside or outside your selection into a translucent color so that you can see what part of the image you have or have not selected. And you can determine in Photoshop whether you want the quick mask overlay to be either on the masked area or the selected area of your image and I'll show you that later. Um, my tool is set to the masked area as an overlay just because I find it easier if I don't cover the selection with an overlay. Um, to turn the quick masks on, what we have to do is either hit the Q key or this little icon right here that's a rectangle with a dash circle in it right below the foreground and background colors and that's what would get you into the interface. So let me show you the image I'm going to be using for this demo and it is this strolling reindeer and as I said this is good for the quick mask because it's got some details like going in and out of these antlers here and some of the spaces and between the legs and everything but it's not super fine detail. I mean, even some of the fur and hair here isn't super fine. So I think the quick mask tool should probably work okay for this kind of an image. So let's get started and see how it works. Uh, in order for me to make my initial selection, I'm going to first duplicate this. I don't like to work on my background layer, so I like to make a duplicate copy. And then with the object selection tool active, I'm just going to draw a rectangle around this reindeer. And I'm not going to focus on talking about making selections because that was already covered in my making selections tutorial. Okay, so um, we've dragged this around and Photoshop has generated an automated selection around the reindeer. And we can see that if I zoom in a little bit here. Uh, because we have what they call in Photoshop the marching ants, so these little animated dashed lines that show where the selection was generated around the outside of this reindeer. And so what we want to do now is go into the quick mask tool and see if we can refine the selection because we can see that there's some areas like where my highlighter is here that we've missed on his head. We've missed in between his antlers here. Uh, it looks like some of his nether regions may have been missed over here. So let's go into quick mask. I'm going to, so as I said, you can either hit this key down here, which is the rectangle. It says edit in quick mask mode, or else you can do what I'm doing and just hit the Q so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the toolbar. So now when we get closer in here, we can see that my masked area is this pink overlay. I like to pick colors that wouldn't typically appear in my images because it makes it easier to see where it is. Um, I also have the opacity of the overlay set to around 50-55% so I can see what I'm working with in my masked area. Uh, as I said, I like my selection to show because I just find it easier to see what it is that I'm trying to reveal. So speaking of revealing, uh, in Photoshop a selection is depicted as white 
and a masked area is depicted as black. So whatever is selected in the white will show, whatever is masked will turn out as black and will not show. So because some part of the reindeer is missing here on the head, we want to reveal part of that. So the reveal color is white. What I'm going to do, and I'm using a stylus and a tablet because I just find it a little bit easier to, to work with when I'm doing edge selections to work with a stylus and a tablet, is to activate the brush tool. So you'd be doing this too for your image. So click on the brush tool, which is just looks like a little paintbrush, and just click on it. And we've got that activated. Okay. And then we want to make sure, because I want to paint an add to my selection on the reindeer's head, that white is showing. We want to reveal what is currently masked by the pink and add to the selection. Uh, I'm going to make my brush, so the brush is not the yellow, the brush is that little circle in the center. The, br the highlight just shows you where I am. So I don't want my brush too big and I'm only going to work a little at a time and I'm just going to start painting. And I'm only going to brush up to the edge of the reindeer, which is why I like to be able to see and have the opacity not too high. So that looks pretty good there. So you can see that the area that was previously pink, meaning it's masked, is now revealed. Let's look around and see if there's anything else. Photoshop's automated selections are doing such a good job these days that uh, very often there's very little to do here to refine. But we'll try it. I'm going to brush over here just in case some of that is selection. It looks like right here in between uh, this part of the antler and whatever, we missed some of the uh, background that should be masked. So that's an area that should be black because we don't want it shown. But right now our foreground color is white. So we want to change the foreground color to black to paint with black and add to the masked area. So to switch the black to the foreground, we can either click on this little double-headed arrow there or you can hit the X key, which is what, watch over here, I'm going to hit the X key and the black goes to the front. So again, it just, it's easier if you do some of these shortcuts so you don't have to keep going back and forth from your image to your toolbar. Okay, so now I've got the black active. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller because this is a small area and I'm just going to now paint where I need to add to the masked area. So there we go, and there's a little bit here that's revealed. See? So you can see I've added pink. All right, here's another area that's from the original background between the antlers. So let's make this a little bigger again, zoom in a little more. And I'm not going to worry about making this purpose uh, perfect for purposes of this video, but for your image, you know, make it as clean as you need to and spend the time you need to. So again, I'm going to be painting in this area that should be part of the background, so part of the pink masked area with black because I want to hide this. That's not part of his antlers. So I'm just again using the brush tool with my stylus and tablet. You could do it with a mouse, but usually a stylus and tablet will give you a little more control and it also gives you the ability to use pen pressure uh, so you can do it harder or lighter depending on the area you're working in. So again, I'm just painting and that pink color is being revealed because it is adding to the mask. Okay, so I'm going to say that that's good enough for that area. There's a little bitty area here that I could touch up in the bat should be part of the background. Ah, looks like part of his nose or whatever the correct term is for <laughs> reindeer's nose. Um, so again, so now this is part of the selection that should have been made but became in the automated selection became part of the background or the masked area. So we need to reveal this area or show this area as part of the selection. So what does that mean? We have to switch using our X key or this double-headed arrow to make white. So we can 
paint this in to be part of the selection. So we're painting with white to add to the selection. And let's see if I can get this here. It looks like it goes there. If you go too far, then you just reverse it and take a little bit away again. But as you can see, for this kind of thing, I think it's easier to just be painting versus trying to work with a quick selection tool, which is what I used in the previous video. There's a little part of his mouth. Oh, see, and by doing that, I went a little too far, so what am I going to do? I'm going to hit the X key, and I'm just going to paint away that little bit. Okay. All right, so we just keep continuing around here. And as I said, mostly I'm not going to worry about refining the fur too much for this image. I think it's close enough for this type of image. Okay, I'm going to add to the background here. So in other words, I'm going to add to the masked area. So I'm going to continue with the black and take a little bit of this grass away. And as I said in the earlier video on refining selections, how much time you want to spend on the refining really depends on how you're going to use your selection. So if you are going to just make slight alterations or subtle alterations, don't spend a ton of time refining your selection. Uh, because it, there won't be enough payback for it. Okay, here's a little bit, a bit here that I think I want to take away from because I think it belongs to this grass. Um, but if you're going to be making a composite and want to move um, an element of your image to another image or move it around within the same image, then you want to be sure you have a pretty precise uh, selection. So then you really should spend the time uh, making a lot of refinements. Okay, so poor guy is never going to be a dad again. So we want to add to the selection. We, that means we want to have the white showing and add to the selection and make this part of the selection. So I'm just painting with my brush with white paint as the foreground and just painting over where I can see in the overlay should have been part of the selection. Okay. and just paint there. And I think I went a little crazy. Okay, so I think I'm going to call this as good enough because you've seen that if you want to add to the selection, you would want to be painting with white if you have it set so that your overlay is the masked area. And that's what I have. The, over, the pink overlay is my masked area. I have my selection revealed. So if you want to reveal the selection, and if you have yours set up the same way, then you would paint with white wherever you want to reveal the selection. When you need to make more of the background or the masked part, visible or uh, expose more of the masked area, then you paint with black as the foreground color. Okay, so I have got my selection refined using the quick mask tool. So now I'm going to hit Q again. It's like a toggle and it takes me out of quick mask mode. And now I am back on my layer. So this is, I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to say, well, let me do the first thing here. So now that I have my refined selection, there's two things you can do. You can either go up to select menu here at the top of the interface and click on select and come down and click on save selection. And if you go there to do that, it will prompt you to name your selection. So you could name it reindeer or something like that. What I prefer to do is while I'm on the active layer, go to my Add Layer Mask tool, which at the bottom of the Layers panel, there's this rectangle with the circle in it. And I left click on that, and it adds my mask that captures my selection. 
So this is my refined selection. Okay. And let me just click on this to reveal that's what the mask looks like now. And we can always, if you use a control or command and click here, oops, sorry, I did the wrong thing here. If you do a control or command and then click on that, then you get your selection. Okay, so with the mask on the layer, you can get your marching ants to show up again. Okay, so then one way to check your edges with this is to add a color layer underneath this. You might have a halo because this is a very light background. Uh, so let me try adding a layer, a new layer color to see how we can check this. So if I come down to the bottom of my layers panel, click on the add layer adjustment, click on solid color, and I think what would be good, given the colors in that image, I think I'm going to do something like that. Okay, I don't want to use a green. Um, and then with this layer, pull it down below the current selection so that we reveal our selection. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. So what I can see by looking at this on the solid color layer, so this is just a temporary layer to help you see how your edges look with your selection. Uh, this is not going to become something that I'm making a part of. You can see that there is a little bit of fringing or outline or what's often referred to as a halo because of this little white glow around the edges. So it seems to have either retained some of the light color uh, from the background image that this was selected from, or it's got some of the color spill from that background layer. So one way to try to see if we can get rid of that, if you need a really fine selection, this is probably good enough if you just want to add a new layer and add some exposure or some vibrance, or uh, if you want to go to a hue and saturation layer and either change the color slightly or alter it radically, things like that, this would probably be fine. But if you want to use this for a composite or a collage or something like that, you probably want to get rid of this fringing and it haloing. So what I suggest here is we come up to the layer menu at the top of the interface right here and come all the way down to the bottom where it says matting and there's a little arrow out to the right that has a pop-out menu with different options for matting. And these are all things that can help you get rid of those remaining edges as a further refinement to the Quick Mask tool. So I'm just going to, and usually with Photoshop, I just find that if you start at the top and go back down, they put their most effective things at the top and then as you go down you may have better luck if the top ones don't work. So let's just start at the top with color decontaminate and click on that and you get this pop-up box and what it's showing is it's color decontaminating by about 19 percent. So right now that's not doing an awful lot. I'm still seeing this white halo around here. So let me start pulling this slider to the right and see if that helped. It looked like it pulled it in a little bit. Let's keep going. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of it going away. Let's go all the way up to 100. Yeah, I mean, so some of this was just lightness um, on the a reindeer's legs, so this isn't the haloing. It really has essentially taken care of the haloing here. So I'm going to click this as OK and say that that really helped with this image. I don't know if it changed it. Yeah, it might have. I think it seemed to crisp up the edge a little bit on the mask too. Um, so having the selection on a col temporary color background 
helped to see that haloing and by going up to layer and matting and trying that option that really did help uh, to get rid of that color. As I said if color contamination doesn't help try the other ones that are in that same thing just click on the next ones to try. So I'm going to turn this off and uh, so I would say that that for now is what I had to show for this particular video about using the quick mask tool to refine a selection that was made with an automated selection tool in Photoshop. And it gives you a really nice sort of a clean selection uh, using the quick mask tool and then combined with layer and matting. So hope that helps and I uh, hope you can use it well in your images and composites. My next video will be focused on using the select and mask tools and interface to refine selections and as I said that will be targeted to more fine detail like hair, feathers, things of that nature. Thanks again!